Plumbing. It's the shittiest part about being a homeowner, and if you have a garbage disposal, at some point it's gonna get clogged. So today, I'm gonna show you how you can get it unclogged and running like new. My name's Aaron Massey and welcome back to another episode of Homeschooled. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This project is pretty easy, but it can vary a little bit based on the level of clog that you're dealing with. To tackle this project, you'll likely need some of or all of the following tools. A little patience and possibly a strong stomach. Now before we get started on showing you how to unclog the disposal, I'm first going to show you how a garbage disposal works because I find that if you know how things in your home work, it's a lot easier for you to fix them when they break. If you don't care about how it works and you just want to skip ahead, no worries, just use the time code links in the description to jump ahead. Otherwise, here we go. Now the following is an illustration of your garbage disposal under your sink. Your pipes and configuration might vary a little bit based on whether you have a single or dual sink, a standalone disposal, or a dishwasher attached, but the principles are still the same. The major components of the disposal are the motor, a drive shaft that spins the cutting disc, a drain outlet, and a reset button on the bottom. Now, if it's working properly, the food waste goes into the cutting chamber, which spins and cuts the waste into small pieces. It then combines with water and is carried out through the drain pipe to the sewer or septic system. However, when the disposal isn't working properly because of an obstruction or waste buildup, it can back up into your sink and create a mess. So let's take a look at how to fix the various levels of clogs. First of all, if you have another sink in addition to your disposal, make sure the water drains from that drain to isolate the problem and make sure the issue is tied to the disposal itself. If both don't drain, there's likely a larger clog going on farther down the line that will likely need to be worked on and the disposal itself is not clogged. If you have standing water in your disposal that won't go down despite turning on the disposal, you'll first need to remove the water with a shop vac. Make sure you remove the filter from the vacuum and dump out any debris in the vacuum before you use it to suck up the water. Once the water is removed, use a flashlight or your cell phone light to make sure there are no visible obstructions in the disposal. If you do see something, unplug the disposal before attempting to retrieve it. A set of long nose pliers or tongs can be helpful in removing obstructions. If there's nothing visible in the disposal, you can still use the shop vac to try and suck out any obstructions in the cutting chamber, but keep in mind that the cutting chamber blocks you from accessing the actual drain line. If you tried those steps and nothing has happened, you can try to add a little bit of water back into the sink and then use a plunger over the disposal to try and dislodge the clog. I recommend just giving it three or four light plunges and seeing if the water drains. Don't aggressively attempt to plunge it or you risk damaging your pipes if they're old or plastic. If the plunger doesn't work, the next step is to actually go under the sink and take a look at the drain pipes. Since the other drains attached to the disposal flow properly, I know that the clog is likely in the outlet pipe or the disposal itself. Using a pair of channel lock pliers, remove the slip nut on the discharge pipe and a screwdriver or a wrench to remove the flange piece that mounts the pipe to the disposal. Once removed, inspect the pipe for clogs and thoroughly clean it. Now, you may gag a little bit here, but that's okay. Also look at the discharge port on the disposal to make sure it is clear of debris as well. Before reinstalling the pipe, replace the discharge gasket on the drain pipe if it looks like it's worn or damaged. You can buy a new gasket for a couple dollars at the hardware store. If everything looks good, reinstall the drain pipe in the reverse order of how you removed it and check to make sure the disposal drains properly. If, however, the discharge port on the disposal is severely clogged like this one, you can try to free it up underneath the sink, or you may need to remove the disposal in order to try and clear the clog. The metal mounting ring is actually a quick release, so if you use a screwdriver, you can spin it a quarter turn and release the disposal so you can remove it. Unfortunately, this disposal is about 14 years old and it's in really bad shape. Not only is it severely clogged, so it's very difficult to clear out, but the metal around the discharge port is also all rusted and rotted out. While I would like to save it, it's actually not worth it and not salvageable. So unfortunately, I'm going to be replacing the disposal. 
If you get this far, you officially have my blessing to call a plumber because the project does get a little bit more f***ing difficult. However, it is something you can do yourself if you choose to, so now I'm going to show you how to get rid of the old disposal and install a new one. Since we've already removed the disposal from the quick release, the next step is to remove the mounting flange by loosening the three mounting screws. Once loose, the next step is to remove the snap ring that holds the pieces together. You can do this with a thin flathead screwdriver. It can be a little tricky to get out, but just take your time with it. Once you remove the components on the underside, you should be able to pull out the sink flange on the top by lifting it out. Thoroughly clean up the old plumber's putty around the sink hole. Once clean, apply a solid half inch bead of new plumber's putty around the underside of the new sink flange that came with your new disposal and press it in place inside the sink. Use the new disposal or some weight to hold it in place. Back on the underside of the sink, assemble the new mounting flange by installing the gasket first, followed by the flange ring, and then the mounting ring. Lastly, add the snap ring to hold all the components in place. From there, tighten the mounting screws to secure the mounting flange in place and squeeze the upper sink flange down into the sink hole. Trust me, I know, it's a lot of flanging. Once tight, you should have a noticeable amount of plumber's putty that is squeezed out around the sides, which you can wipe up with a rag. Next, you're ready to mount the disposal itself. Lifting it in place, secure the top to the mounting ring and turn it a quarter turn to lock it in place the opposite way you removed the previous one. From there, mount the drain pipe assembly to the side of the disposal and connect it to the drain assembly with the slip nut and washer assembly. Keep in mind that if you install a different size unit like I'm doing, you may have to modify the drain pipe using some inch and a half pipe fittings in order to make everything fit together. Finally, plug in the new disposal, run some water, turn it on, and check the whole assembly for leaks. If there's no leaks, you're finally finished with this project. Personally, I think garbage disposals are one of the dumbest inventions we have in modern kitchens and are all but assured to clog up on you at some point. So I'd suggest you consider composting your food waste instead. Not only can you use it in your yard or garden as an excellent soil additive, but it's also better for the environment and it won't end up clogging up your pipes. But if you don't feel like composting and you want to hang on to your disposal anyway, at least now you know how to fix it when it backs up on you. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and I hope you learned something. If you did like it, please consider hitting that like button down below and also subscribing to the channel for more DIY home improvement projects. And as always, you can find all my how-to tutorials on my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.